This is an overview of Chapter 5, System Designs, Job Order Costing. So, managers need to assign costs to products to facilitate external reporting and internal reporting and decision making. This chapter illustrates absorption cost costing approach. And this is also known as job order costing. So, absorption costing and job order costing. Um, there are two types of product costing systems. First, process costing. A company produces many units of a single product. One unit of a product is indistinguishable from another unit of the product. They are identical in nature, um, which enables them to uh, assign the same average cost per unit. So some examples of this, when you think about something, uh, when you sell an, the exact same thing, um, paper, if someone manufactures paper, you know, that would be something that's indistinguishable, one piece of paper from the next piece of paper. Um, and then you might have different product lines in there, but um, also Coca-Cola, if you're manufacturing Coca-Cola, one can of Coca-Cola is exactly like the next can of Coca-Cola. So that would be using process costing. Job order costing is many different products are produced each period. Products are manufactured to order. The unique nature of each order, tracing or allocating costs to each job and maintaining cost records for each job. So instead of just allocating costs in the process costing system, job order costing, each job is very different in nature or, and we can track the jobs separately in order to give exact costs for that specific job. Um, the types of products that you would see job order costing would be um, aircraft, aircraft carriers, tankers for military, Boeing man manufactures airplanes, um, construction projects. You know, um, currently we're putting up a new building at Elms, so that construction project, everything that that architect will do and those construction people will do will be allocated to that specific job because they'll be traced the product to go into that job. Um, a movie production, each movie is different, and they would job order cost the actual movie to figure out the real cost of the movie. So comparing process and job order costing, um, for job order, you have many number of jobs. Um, you accumulate costs by job. So you would have job number one, job number two, job number 4,000, and each job would have their own costs associated to it and the average cost is computed by job. Whereas if you're manufacturing like Coca-Cola, um, although they have manufactured different products, Coke, Diet Coke, which have different ingredients, they would have a single product, they would accumulate cost by department, and then they would calculate average cost per department. So we're working on job order costing in this section. So job order costing, an overview would be um, you charge direct materials and direct labor to each job as the work is performed. So, for example, construction companies have multiple projects going on at once. So the construction company, and I don't know the name of the people working at Elm, they would be, they would have certain employees on job one, they would have other employees on job two, and they would have other employees on job three. And so you would directly assign each employee and their time to the job order that they were working on that day, that week, or that month. Um, direct labor, um, direct materials. So specifically, we're building a science building. So all the materials that the construction company brings on site would be traced directly to the Elms College job. Now, manufacturing overhead is different. It can't be directly traced. It includes indirect materials, indirect labor, and are allocated to all jobs. So the company calculates a manufacturing overhead rate, and they allocate it to jobs. So, why use an allocation basis? Manufacturing overhead is applied to jobs that are in process. The allocation basis, such as direct labor hours, so um, there might be a, uh, a manufacturing overhead cost per labor hour, um, or direct labor dollars, so per dollar that we spend on labor, there's a manufacturing overhead cost, or machine hours. It's used to assign manufacturing overhead to individual jobs. The reason that we do this is because it's very difficult to trace overhead to a particular job. The grease that goes into maintaining the tools for the construction site can't specifically be traced to Elms. 
Manufacturing overhead consists of many different items, um, and then many types of manufacturing overhead costs are fixed, even though output fluctuates. Um, so fixed manufacturing overhead, we we have you know predetermined information there. So the application of manufacturing overhead. So when we're doing this job order costing, we come up with a predetermined overhead rate. Um, this is used to apply overhead to jobs um, before the period begins. A lot of times, construction companies are outside, they're bidding for that construction project. So therefore, they have to apply a predetermined overhead rate. That might not actually be their overhead rate, but they're going to have to estimate. So it's estimated total manufacturing overhead cost for the coming period divided by estimated total units um, for allocation during the coming period. Ideally, the allocation basis is a cost driver that causes overhead, like labor hours, machine hours. So in that construction industry, it would be labor hours or labor dollars, but probably labor hours. Um, so the, the application of manufacturing overhead. So predetermined overhead rates are calculated using a three-step process. First, you estimate the level of production. Second, you estimate the total amount of allocation base in the determiner that would be required for that level of production. So we're estimating, all right, how many products are we going to produce or how many things are we going to build this, this month uh, or this year? Then we divide it by our estimated costs and that gets us an estimated manufacturing overhead cost. And that's what we use to allocate when we're pricing out jobs. This is a very important step. So applied overhead rate. So first we estimate a predetermined rate. So let's say it's $8 an hour. So we come up with $8 per labor hour is our manufacturing overhead. So when we guess, when we make an estimate for the cost of this project to figure out if we should bid out the project or not, we apply a manufacturing, we come up with a predetermined rate. Then when we go ahead and actually apply the overhead for that job as it's happening, we take the predetermined rate, our POHR, predetermined overhead rate, times actual activity. Originally, we just estimated activity, but obviously, if we're completing the job, we know what actual activity is. So um, here's an idea of what happens with the documents when we're in a job order costing. So materials requ requisition. This is a request for materials. And the direct materials go directly on the job cost sheets. So if I bought, you know, 12 steel beams for Elms College building, that is a direct material to the job sheets. Now, if I bought, um, you know, a box of screws and um, some tape, that would go to the manufacturing overhead account because the box of screws may not be all used there and we may not track each screw. Um, you know, the tape may not all be used at Elms, so that's going to be in the overhead rate. How the employee's time may be direct or indirect. Now, remember, we talked about manager's salaries and then the actual people working on the floor um, making the product. So if I'm working directly on the Boeing aircraft, that is direct labor. But if I'm a salaried employee taking care of uh, a bunch of employees that work on different projects, I would be indirect labor and therefore be part of the manufacturing overhead account. So inside manufacturing overhead, we have other actual overhead charges, depreciation, um, utilities for the factory, um, other things that go in there. Then we have indirect labor and indirect material. All of these add up to calculate manufacturing overhead. Then you find you actually apply the overhead to the job cost. Now remember, we applied a predetermined one, so we may be off, we may be over, we may be correct, or we may be under. So the difference between overhead cost applied in work in process and the actual overhead of the period is referred to as either under applied overhead or over applied. When we have under applied it, that means we guessed, but actual costs were more than we guessed. So this exists, um, and we would have to adjust our overhead. We would have to make the change to add more cost to it. 
Now, if we over applied overhead, this means that we guessed cost, but it was actually more than our real cost. So therefore, we've over applied the overhead. Um, and we would have to reduce the cost that we applied to, to the project based on the fact that it, we really applied too much overhead to that project. So over applied overhead, you would deduct from cost of goods sold when you make the adjustment. And under applied overhead, you would add the cost of goods sold. Um, when you're calculating your predetermined overhead rate, um, you're using an estimate or a budget amount of allocation based on uh, the basis has been criticized because basing predetermined overhead rate upon budgeted activity levels in product costs that fluctuate depending on activity level. Also, calculating predetermined rates based upon budgeted activity charges um, for costs that they do not use. So sometimes what happens is people aren't very good at estimating costs. And this happens with all kinds of different types of industries, um, but they may not take into account capacity. They may not take into account actual expenses that they use. Um, so there are problems with predetermined overhead rate, but it is a process that people use. So we're actually going to go ahead and move forward in chapter five, and I'm gonna post um, another video with examples of actually applying this predetermined overhead rate and then the, deciding whether it's over applied or under applied and then making um, income statements from that. So that'll be the next video.